Um, constitutive modeling, right? So constitutive modeling is the relationship between two variables, a constitutive model, let's say. And what they really are is um, closure relationships in the conservation equations, right? So we have conservation of mass, momentum, energy, and the second law of thermodynamics, right? If you actually know those four equations, you know engineering. That, that's it. Engineering is those four equations, right? And everything we do is just a special case or like a special solution of those four equations. So let, let's say classic, classical engineering. There's, that's, that's not true when you, you know, in all these fancy research topics and micromechanics and everything else. But like continuum engineering is those four equations. And um, so closure relationships, and we already know one, right? What, what's the most famous constitutive model in petroleum engineering? Darcy's law, right? Darcy's law. So it's a relationship between velocity and, and pressure, or the pressure gradient. And we can then, that, that gives us a closure relationship in the conservation of mass equation, right? So the conservation of mass equation has a velocity in it. And we can stick then the velocity, that Darcy's law, in for the velocity in the conservation of mass. And then a few other manipulations and assumptions about the density and compressibilities and other things. And we can end up with an equation that's only in terms of pressure, right? And then we can solve that equation. So now we're talking about, you know, in this class, we're talking about Newton's law, law right? Conservation momentum. And so the closure relationship we need here, you know, again, if we write down conservation momentum, and I'm writing it in the, in the vector form, understand that, you know, stress is a tensor, it has nine components. Uh, U and B are vectors, so they have three components each. Uh, so we want to solve this equation for u, right, for the unknown displacements. Right. So we need a closure relationship. We need something that relates the stress to u. Right. And what we do, what we use as a sort of an intermediate thing is strain, right? So strain is a function of u, and stress is a function of strain. And so the constitutive models in mechanics are basically things that relate stress to strain. Okay? And you, you already know one from your you know, 319, engineering mechanics 319, at least in one dimension, what is what's the relationship between stress and strain? Young's modulus, right? So stress equals Young's modulus times strain, right? What's this thing called? Hooke's law, right? Hooke's law. Okay. Now, in our grown-up version of con continuum mechanics or uh, conservation of momentum, stress is a tensor. It has nine <coughs> components, right? Or at least six unique ones, because it's because it's symmetric. And so, um, if we're coming up with something in between stress and strain, well you can probably infer that if stress has nine components, then strain also has nine components. Right? Again, six unique ones. And the thing in between them, right, the, the, the material properties in between them, uh, so the combination of those material properties and the definition of strain is going to give us something called generalized Hooke's Law. And that's valid only for elastic materials, right? So, you know, remember what this is is stress versus strain. Like this is an elastic material, right? So this is the slope of this curve is E, and we call it elastic because if we were to load it, right? If we were to strain the material and then release it, it goes back where it came from. It's elastic. So we load it up and then it returns. Right? What we'll see is that rocks, particularly when they're confined, right, when they're under some pressure, can actually have a inelastic response. So they have some region of inelasticity, or sometimes you might hear it called plasticity, at which, if you know, if you load into this region and then you were to unload, you're not going to return to where you came from. 
You're going to load into this region, and you're going to return elastically, right? So if I load the material up, I strain it to here, and then I unload it, it's going to return elastically, but there's going to be some permanent deformation, some permanent strain in the material. So in a rock, what do you think, what do you think that a physical, do anybody have an idea of a physical mechanism that would call permanent strain? Uh, no, I'm just saying, uh, not, not even, uh, say we go to the lab, right? You go to the lab, and you can find your rock, and you squeeze it, and then you let it go, and it doesn't pop back. It doesn't pop back elastically. It doesn't recover all of its deformation. What, what happened inside that rock that made it? At a little bit larger scale than atoms. Uh, could could happen, right? The the most uh, common mechanism in rock there's sort of two, and that's one. Ro rocks are have a tremendous amount of flaws in them, right? There's little micro cracks all over them, right? And so um, one mechanism is that you compress, slip, and or extend those micro cracks. Not to the extent that, so of course, if I continue to do this, I, I'll fail the rock. It'll break into two or more pieces, right? But what I'm what I'm talking about here is this inelastic deformation that's that's you know prior to complete failure, complete loss of strength. Right? <clears throat> so, you know, we we can take those uh, micro cracks, we squeeze the rock, and some of those micro cracks might extend or slip, some of them might close up and coalesce, and that is permanent. It's not gonna when you un, when you unload it, it the, those things are, you know if you extended a crack and you unload it it's not gonna grow the cr the, the crack's not gonna heal itself. So those are permanent mechanism deformation. The other popular one or common one in <coughs> geomaterials or rocks is pore collapse. Right? So they have pores, they have pores in them. If you squeeze it enough, you're gonna you can collapse those pores permanently. And again, when you when you release it, <coughs> the pores won't pop back open. So those are two common mechanisms of permanent or inelastic deformation in rocks. <coughs> so 